Hey, good morning, you guys. Oh, afternoon, you guys. I'm so sorry I'm late. I've had nothing but problems trying to get my studio set up and um, I was excited to be back in there today, but nothing's working. So <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hi, Nora. Good to see you. Ready to rumble? Good. I'm ready to go too. I'm going to get right into it. Just going to give you a brief overview of what uh, the week is going to look like for me um, because you know, I do intend to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, <clears throat> last Friday, I was ill. And so <clears throat> the Friday before I had issues too. So I do intend to do it on Friday as well. You guys, I didn't mean to just blow it off and, uh, not inform you, but, um, here we go. And so I'm getting my pod bean set up as well so that you guys can, just listen because this really is kind of a listening study. There is a lot of visuals too, but you know, um, it's, I was thinking this is a perfect podcast because it's really a lot of reading a lot of times. And so, you know, it's great for the drive. I want to thank everybody who is hanging out with me, uh, with the study and who takes the time to learn our history and who actually has, <clears throat> excuse me, a desire <clears throat> excuse me, to learn about our constitution and to learn about our remedies and our laws and what we can do to make things better. Instead of just sitting around and bitching on and on and on and on and on. It's been three years on YouTube and I just see a lot of people talking the same conversation. What'd you have for dinner? What'd you do this day? What'd you? And that's great. I love having the conversations, but I'm really thankful for people who are actually taking actionable items. You are my people. I'm, I'm so frustrated with all of us who have talents and hide them under a bushel and aren't out there doing the work of God that we're supposed to be doing. Those of us who know the truth, to just stay home and be comfortable and not do anything to help our country right now is unfathomable to me. I can't even... I can't even imagine not trying everything I can for our kids. My kids are grown. They're 25 and 26 and they're good ones. They're good young adults. They work hard. They are intelligent. They are self-governing individuals like myself. I'm learning so much too, and I don't mean to sound so mean. I mean to sound thankful and grateful to everyone who is taking their time to educate their self about our country. I don't know how to encourage more people to do it. I, I really, it's fun. I'm learning so much. We're bonding here. We're, we're, you know, excited about the potential here without taking actionable items though and educating myself i would be a, in a hopeless despair day after day so i just want to encourage you guys to jump in we're only on less than 13 here it's going to take us years to get through this at this pace i hope i'm able to pick it up and um go faster but what's more important than anything right now is actually retaining the information and understanding it so so there, there's my spiel welcoming everybody uh, who's going to watch the replay. Also, who's not in here right now. Um, you know, this is this is a 20 minute study three days a week. And I promise you, if you listen in, you are going to learn so much. Nora and I are learning so much and it's cool. It's exciting. It's fun. It helped me helps me to wrap my mind around what is going on here. You you cannot explain what the problems are to someone and they won't fully grasp it unless they really know our history and our laws. And this is the most comprehensive study about the constitution. It is said to be better than Hillsdale College study about the constitution because Hillsdale goes off and starts teaching you about government. Don't we really just want to know what our constitution laws and rights are? I do. I don't care about someone's interpretation about the government. That's where we get into all kinds of trouble. So if you're new to following along, what you can do is go to standuphumble.net. If you go... You go to dot news, you go all the way to the right tab where it says the constitution, click on the tab. The first, uh, 
drop down menu item is the constitution study. Go to there. I'm going to read straight from here today. I was able to actually get these in order today. And um, I'm just, this is a straight read today. The, you know, we're in the binder study. The binder uh, we read last week. Let's see, let's find our binder study. We're not even on question one yet. Okay, we're on number 13. We're in session two. And we haven't even got to question one yet. Because they've got this special thing called introduction. Suggested reading. Well, we're doing the suggested reading. I wouldn't dare skip the suggested reading. Last Wednesday, I read The Genius of Natural Law. Now we're, today we're reading The Man Who Discovered America's Freedom Formula. And we're still not even going to be done with the introduction then. Wednesday, I'll come back and read another 11 pages to you. So today is a straight read. I'm not answering any questions yet. I was advised to keep these down to 20 and 30 minutes. If I were to go through this whole session, it would probably take an hour or two. I'd like to go through the whole thing, but hi, Jerry Lee. Good to see you, honey. Okay, so we're going to start right here. Um, <clears throat> right here, we're going to be reading these 10 pages, and they are right here on the screen for you. These will be up until Wednesday when we do our new study. Then these will be removed, and for our visual educational purposes, these will be up for the lesson only. Okay, so here we go. God help me study my words and just do good. <laughs> Help my tongue to speak well. Amen. Okay, here we go. The man who discovered America's freedom formula. Let's see, how, how many minutes are we in here? Seven minutes, not too bad. Okay, one of the most exciting stories in America's history is the account of the man who tunneled back into the ancient past and was among the first to rediscover the remarkable formula which allowed the United States to become the first free nation in modern times. As a matter of fact, it took the early Americans 180 years to put it all together, but when it finally settled into place, their formula ignited the fires of freedom all over the world. Perhaps there is such there is a tendency to take much of this for granted. However, the founders warned us that their formula for freedom could be lost in a single generation. No doubt our appreciation of the founders' achievement will be stimulated by briefly tracing the fascinating explorations of the one man who probably had as much influence on the final results as any living person in that day. Who was Thomas Jefferson? Practically every American knows the name of Thomas Jefferson, but very few Americans know his story. We will first record a few biological facts and then present Jefferson's little-known discovery in which he uncovered the ancient formula for a society based on freedom, prosperity, and peace. Thomas Jefferson was born April 13, 1743, up near the Blue Ridge Mountains, up of what is now the western section of the state of Virginia. By that time, George Washington was 11 years old. In Philadelphia, Benjamin Franklin was 37 years old. He had already invented the Franklin stove and was city postmaster. In Boston, Samuel Adams, who is often called the father of the revolution, was just graduating from Harvard with a master's degree at the age of 21. Samuel's younger cousin, John Adams, was eight years old when Jefferson was born. One day he would influence Jefferson to write the Declaration of Independence. Patrick Henry was seven years old. However, James Madison, who would have so much to do with putting Jefferson's ideas into the Constitution, would not be born yet until eight years later. Obviously, it was an illustrious age, and the names of men who were later receive international fame, who would later, because of their connection with the founding of the United States, were beginning to appear on the American scene. Jefferson's early life. Jefferson was born at Shadwell on the Riviana River, which forms one of the headwaters of the James River. It was rugged frontier country. Jefferson never considered himself an aristocrat dandy, even though his mother was from the prominent Randolph family and his father was a member of the House of Burgess. Tom, young Tom took pride in the fact that his father, Peter Jefferson, was not only the hardest working man he had ever seen, but was also reputed to be one of the strongest men in the whole dominion. It was said that he could upend two tobacco hog heads at the same time, each weighing over 500 pounds. What? Was he a giant? 
Peter Jefferson helped survey and draw the first accurate map of Virginia. He was justice of the peace and a lieutenant colonel in the county militia. Tom's father had a tremendous influence in shaping the character of his son and inspiring him with a powerful sense of commitment in building up the great new American Commonwealth. It therefore came as a tremendous emotional shock to Thomas Jefferson when his father suddenly died. Young Jefferson was then only the age of 14. This made Thomas Jefferson the head of his family. With an estate located in one of the most challenging and rugged sections of the Virginia fun frontier. He later realized this was a point in his life when he might easily have lost his way and afterwards commented on the challenge and temptations he faced as a teenager. When I recollect that at 14 years of age, the whole care and direction of myself was thrown on myself entirely without a relation or friend qualified to advise or guide me and recollect the various sorts of bad company with which I associated from time to time. I am astonished I did not turn off with some of them and become as worthless to society as they were. <laughs> Graduates from college at age 19. Fortunately, his father's will provided sufficient funds for him to further his education. Jefferson first dug into Latin and Greek so he could read classical works in their original languages. He seems to have been equally diligent in other studies. By the age of 16, he was allowed to enter the College of William and Mary in Virginia capital city of Williamsburg. He entered it as an advanced student. Even at 16, he was remarkably well-developed. At around six feet, two inches in height, he stood nearly a head taller than the average citizen of those days. One who knew him at this time described him as follows. He was fresh, bright, healthy looking youth with large hands and feet, red hair. He was a redhead? I didn't know that. Freckled skin, hazel gray eyes, prominent cheekbones, and a heavy chin. His form was straight as a gun barrel, sinewy and alert, and he cultivated his strength by familiarity with saddle, gun, canoe, and minuet. He early showed perfect self resilience and had strong taste for mathematics and mechanics. There is a photo of the Virginia mountains, the Blue Ridge mountains, where he was from near Charlottesville. His friend, John Page. Oh, and there, here's the picture of the William and College Mary. His friend, John Page who later became governor of Virginia, was amazed that Jefferson was so literally in love with learning. No matter how much he might in, be enjoying a party or the prospects of a hunt, he could tear himself away from his dearest friends to fly his studies. His intensity with books was inspired in part by a warm friendship which developed between himself and a favorite professor named Dr. William Small. Jefferson wrote, it was my great good fortune and what probably fixed the Denny's destinies of my life that Dr. William Small of Scotland was then professor of mathematics, a man profound in most of the useful branches of science with a happy talent of communication, correct and gentle manly manners, and an enlarged and liberal mind. He, most happily for me, became so attached to me and made me his daily companion when he not engaged in the school. And from his conversation, I got my first views of the expansion of science and of the system of things in which we are placed. Oh my gosh, I have to make a comment. Teachers, teachers, teachers. Thank you for taking a special interest in students who need you. Thank you. By the time Jefferson had graduated from William and Mary at the age of 19, he had developed mature study habits. It was not unusual for him to spend up to 14 hours a day with his books, his violin, and a run each evening to keep himself physically fit. We read that. During the most closely occupied days of his college life, it was his habit to study until two o'clock at night, it's not the morning, and rise at dawn, the day he spent in close application, the only reaction being a run at twilight to a certain stone which stood at a point a mile beyond the limits of the town. Man, I thought we were having an earthquake, you fat cat. Fatty. The day that changed his life. There's a photo of him or drawing Patrick Henry's fiery speech. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Patrick Henry speaking, which had an profound effect on Thomas Jefferson. The day that 
to change his life. During these days of intensive study in Williamsburg, which was the Dominion capital, he occasionally broke away to hear the debates in the House of Burgesses. On May 29, 1765, a newly elected member of the assembly named Patrick Henry rose to give his famous oration against the Stamp Act. This is the speech in which he said, if this be treason, make the most of it. Jefferson was there, he says. Excuse me. Oh, man, hold it together, girl. Don't get sick on camera. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. Mm. I attended the debate standing at the door of the lobby of the House of Burgesses and heard the splendid display of Mr. Henry's talents as a popular orator. They were great indeed such as I have never heard from any other man. He appeared to me to speak as Homer wrote. Something remarkable happened to Thomas Jefferson that day as he stood listening intently to Patrick Henry's eloquent denunciation of the abuses that were being heaped upon the American colonies. It kindled a flame in his soul. He felt such a surge of fervor for the cause of freedom and justice that the flame burned brightly the rest of his days. He later referred to this and as an important day of his life, as the most important day of his life. He is admitted to the bar. In the early 1767, Jefferson was brought before the General Court of Virginia for an oral examination to gain admittance to the bar. He was being sponsored by George Wythe, the Virginia's foremost legal authority. Since most lawyers submitted themselves to the bar examination after little more than six months preparation, Jefferson's erudite young and mind created quite a stir among the judges that day. No matter what the subject, he seemed to know more than they did. It must have pleased George with to see his brilliant pupil respond to the penetrating questions from the gentleman on the bench. At the age of 23, Jefferson was admitted to the bar and immediately moved back to his hometown of Shadwell, where he began the practice of law. The next year, he was elected to represent in his county in the House of Burgess. Young Thomas Jefferson's three distinguished friends. Striving for excellence was Thomas Jefferson's natural habit, and the ability he achieved with three hours a day on the violin paid off handsomely in several phases of his life. Three hours? During his college days, it brought him to the attention of the royal governor, Francis Fauquier. The governor was no ordinary politician, but a former student and protege of Sir Isaac Newton in England. Fauquier was an economist in some repute, a student of physics and a fellow of the Royal Society of England. Oh, excuse me, of the Royal Society of England. We have already mentioned he first of Jeffer the, the first of Jefferson's distinguished friends, Professor William Small, and it was the professor who introduced Jefferson to Governor Farquhar. Before long, the governor had Jefferson playing his violin in weekly concerts conducted at the governor's palace. Professor Small was introduced. Also introduced Jefferson, come here, who would later, let's see, let me read that again. Professor Small also introduced Jefferson to the famous George Wythe, who would later sign the Declaration of Independence and serve at the Constitutional Convention. Wythe pronounced Wythe, <laughs> was the first law professor in America and later had a tremendous influence on Jefferson's study of the law. For some time, Governor Farquhar, George Wythe, and Professor Small had philosophical discussions. Now they included young Thomas Jefferson at these dinners, Jefferson later recalled. I have never heard more good sense, more rational and philosophical conversations than in all of my life besides. Five years of specialized study with George Wythe. It was the greatest stroke of good fortune that Thomas Jefferson had the opportunity to be accepted by George Wythe as a protege for the study of law. The two got along famously. Wythe thought a well-trained lawyer would know just about everything, and Thomas Jefferson had the appetite for it. He studied not only law, but also languages, physics, agriculture, mathematics, philosophy, chemistry, anatomy, zoology, botany, religion, politics, history, literature, rhetoric, and virtually every other subject imaginable, always recording quotations and observations in his personal notebooks. Jefferson called this 
a time of life when I was bold in the pursuit of knowledge, never fearing to follow the truth and reason to whatever results they led. Is there any other way to live? He had an amazing aptitude for languages so that by adulthood he could read Latin, Greek, Spanish, Italian, and Anglo-Saxon. In addition to his mastery of the spoken word in his native tongue, he became very fluent in French. French, wow, amazing. In 1770, the Shadwell family home went up in flames and burned every book and paper he owned. But by 1775, he had built his library back up to a thousand volumes. Toward the end of his life, his collection of the finest literature was purchased by the government and became the nucleus for the United States Library of Congress. His appetite for learning paid handsomely dividends, and as one of the field knowledge cross-fertilized with another, as one field of knowledge cross-fertilized with another, he became highly credible in several fields of science. He contrived a whole series of inventions for which he never attempted to secure patents. One of his servants, a trained tinsmith, admired Jefferson's ability to fashion keys, locks, and chains out of brass and iron. One scholar credits him with the firing the signal gun. The, oh, sorry, one scholar credits him with firing the signal gun of America paleontology. He also took great interest in the origins, languages, and customs of the American Indians. He amassed a large number of in, Indian vocabularies as part of his study. He studied architecture, drawings, still in extensive reflect his highly, still in existence, reflect his highly professional skill. As the years went by in his mind, as the years went by, his mind became a scintillating reservoir of expertise in so many fields that it is difficult to find an example of equal accomplishment either then or now. His research was so thorough and his conclusions so carefully drawn that a well-educated traveler from New England who engaged him in conversation without knowing his identity later wrote, when he spoke of law, I thought he was a lawyer. When he talked about mechanics, I was sure he was an engineer. When he got into medicine, it was evidence he was a physician. When he discussed theology, I was convinced he must. Uh-oh, hold on. Dang it, I read out of I read a page first, raw out of order. Man, I worked so hard on that. Okay, sorry, we're gonna <laughs> this page was supposed to be read before that page. Thomas Jefferson was always popular and socially, but he was rather shy around the young ladies. He seemed to have adored them from a distance. When he was 19, he conjured up enough courage to ask a beautiful belle of Williamsburg named Belinda Burwell to marry him. He had practiced his proposal with unusual thoroughness. But when I had an opportunity, a few broken sentences uttered in great disorder and inter interrupted with pauses of uncommon length were two visible marks of my strange confusion. No doubt Belinda listened to the painful declamation with astonishment and amusement, but no more so than a short time later when he came back again, even better rehearsed. Jefferson got his answer a few weeks later when Belinda married Jefferson's best friend. Ooh, burn. And his best friend, not knowing Jefferson's deep feelings for his fiance, asked Thomas to be the best man at his wedding. Ouchie! It was not until eight years later that Jefferson gained enough courage to propose again. This time it was to a very attractive young widow in Williamsburg, Martha Wales Skelton, whose husband had died before she was 20. She often accomplished Jefferson on the harpsichord when he played his violin. From this association, a romance developed of the classical variety, which is usually found only in storybooks. Jefferson built a beautiful home for his new bride called Monticello, which is today one of the most famous houses in America. Monticello, Jefferson's home, which he designed and built himself. Is there anything else this guy hasn't done? I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, oh, yes. And let me go back to that page where I read the wrong sentence. I was convinced he must be by a clergyman when he talked of literature. I made up my mind that I had run against a college professor who knew everything. During August 1774, Jefferson wrote a paper which sent his name skirting across the Atlantic to England. It was called A Summary View of the Rights of the British American. 
America. It provided a legal history and political analysis of the rights of the English colonists in America and accused the Crown of ignoring and abusing those rights. The British government was not accustomed to thinking of Americans as citizens with certain unalienable English rights. Jefferson's published pronouncement was distributed throughout America and published in England. It attracted widespread attention and arose a considerable amount of bristling indignation in the royal court. Excuse me, in the royal court. Jefferson was then 31 years of age. Is that all? A summary view of the rights of the British America Revolutionary Tract by Thomas Jefferson, 1774. British America set forth some resolution intended for the inspection of the present delegates of the people of Virginia now in convention be a native and member of the House of Burgesses. All right, let's read this. A summary view of the rights of British America, revolutionary track by Thomas Jefferson, July 1774. Resolve that a humble and dutiful address be presented to this to his majesty, begging leave to lay before him the united complaints of his majesty's subjects in America to re represent to his majesty that when he reflects, he is no more than the chief officer of the people appointed by the laws and circumscribed with definite powers to assist in working the great machine of government. Single acts of tyranny may be ascribed to the accidental opinion of a day, but a series of oppressions pursued unalterably through every change of ministers to plainly prove a deliberate systematical plan of reducing us to slavery can any one reason be assigned why 160,000 electors in the island of Great Britain should give law to four millions in the states of America, every individual of whom is equal to every individual of them in virtue, in understanding, and in bodily strength? While the people have delegated the powers of legislation, when they are dissolved, the power reverts to the people who may use it to unlimited extent. We forbear to trace consequences further. The dangers are conspicuous. Open your breast, sire, to liberal and expanded thought. Let not the name of George III be a blot in the page of history. Did I read a wrong page again? No. Verse 24. Young Jefferson goes to Congress. By 1775, the tide of history was running fast. American blood had been shed by British redcoats at Lexington and Concord on April 19th. Then came the Battle of Bunker Hill, actually Breed's Hill, on June 17th, where more than 450 Americans were shot or bayoneted. No doubt Jefferson was among those who wondered if King George was suffering from another of the fits of insanity which plagued him from time to time. <laughs> Nothing seemed to appease the king, neither a pre-offered payment for the Boston Tea nor pleas of loyal submission. He seemed determined to treat Americans as some of his most ferocious enemies. All civil government was suspended in Massachusetts and Boston was occupied first by General Cage and later by General Howe as the commander in chief of all British troops in America. Like other Americans, Jefferson wondered where it would all end. Jefferson was sent to the Second Continental Congress in Philadelphia, arriving June 20th, 1775. He was one of the youngest members present. Only John Jay of New York was slightly younger. In the fall, Jefferson had to leave the Congress because of the death of his 18-month-old daughter. His wife and his mother were also very ill. There were dark forebodings as the tide of history moved in upon the American colonies in January of 1776. Word came that the American expedition to capture Quebec had failed. General Montgomery was killed and Benedict Arnold, who had been a hero in this campaign, was wounded. It was only a matter of months before the Americans were driven out of Canada completely. Jefferson was also extremely concerned about the bad news from Boston. Washington had lost over 400 of his soldiers. Many of those remaining were sick. Others were disheartened. When their enlistments were up, a mere handful re-enlisted. And since the British would not come out and fight, Washington reported that the restless Americans passed much of the time simply fighting among themselves. To make matters worse, King George virtually disowned the American colonies. He announced that if the colonies were attacked by foreign foes, Britain would furnish no help. 
American ships were declared to be free booty, which meant it would be legal to capture any American vessel in the high seas and take it over, cargo and all. As for the crew, they would be impressed into the British Navy. It was this dismal setting that Thomas Jefferson commenced what would turn out to be one of the most important years of his life, but he would later have scarcely suspected it. His mother died on March 31st, which was a great blow to Jefferson. He suffered excruciating migraine headaches for the next five weeks after his mother died. His tensions were further aggravated when he read the six drafts which had been submitted for a Virginia constitution. All were defective, even though they had been drafted by such illustrative patriots as John Adams, Richard Henry Lee, Meriwether Smith, George Mason, Carter Bax Braxton, Patrick Henry, and others of high repute. It was obvious that the best minds in the country were still struggling to find proper formulas for the efficient self-government of a free and independent state. Jefferson therefore decided to try his own hand at constitution writing. In spite of his mourning and migraine headaches, Jefferson wrote three separate drafts during the first five weeks. However, he was robbed of the pleasure of delivering them personally on the legislative in Williamsburg because he was sent as a delegate to Congress. He arrived in Philadelphia on May 14th, carrying the third draft in his pocket. The longer Jefferson stayed in Philadelphia, the worse he felt. He made an intense anxiety to be in Williamsburg. Finally, Jefferson wrote a letter requesting that he be given a leave of absence from Congress so he could lend a hand in writing the Virginia Constitution. Fortunately, his request was denied. Had it been otherwise, he would have missed the greatest honor of his life, the privilege of writing the Declaration of Independence. Frustrated and disappointed, Jefferson sent his third draft to the Virginia legislator. However, they only used an insignificant portion of it. His constitution would have overturned the whole aristocrat structure of the state. Virginia was not yet ready for such a revolutionary change. That is our reading for today. 30 minutes. Nah, not too bad. Not too bad. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. Nice to see you all here. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> hey, Patriot Starfighter. Good to see you. I've been seeing you around. Um, yeah. Wow. What a life he had. You know, we, we've heard a lot about Thomas Jefferson in school, you know, but I don't think they ever really gave us that story. Right. I don't think they ever really gave us that story. Um, House of Burgess is nice. Yeah. You heard in history class, it stuck in my head because it was fitting. Yeah. Really mind blowing. Right, Nora? Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate y'all so much. I'm not sure if I'll see you later or not. I'm not feeling so hot. I wanted to come on and do a rant stream. I got a lot of things I'm upset about. Yeah, but I got some company coming. We're going to have three boys under six years old here for the next four days. And my husband and I feel like we got grandkids coming. But these kids that had the kids are our friends. They're not like our kids. But we're pumped, you guys. I'm going to have some littles. And I haven't been around littles in a while. So, you know, I'm really excited to be able to hang out with them. But I'll still be doing my class on Wednesday. I'm going to be streaming with my column from the Renegade Nation this week. I'm going to be streaming with Louie. We're going to be talking about our vendor event that's coming up, Tax Day. If you want to know new ways to do business, uh, Red Lion Inn, April 15th, uh, is going to be my first big event, Humboldt County. I'm doing it. I'm hosting it. I'm putting it together. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about it, but you know what? God is already moving and bringing such good men and women into my sphere right now that it's just it's already it's already there i just have to do a very little bit of work so if you know any small business owners in humble county that are interested in accepting silver as currency that are interested in learning what private membership associations are that are interested in the real laws of the land and not what this corrupt government tells us are then I hope you can come and make it. I will be doing some streaming from the event also, so you guys can all see it. I love you all. Thank you for coming. And, um, you know, I think reading our Bible and reading our Constitution right now are the best things we can do. If you can chunk out some time in each day. Look, Jefferson did three hours on his violin. You know, we could do, can't we do 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes? of reading some good literature because the problem that we, that I, the way I see it is 
we are really uh we're falling away in the end they're all led astray by their own devices i never really realized how much our devices were going to be our downfall we can watch whatever we want whenever we want did you know that the biggest problem in america um is trying to figure out how we're going to be entertained tonight. Well, how are we going to entertain ourselves? Um, these guys that gave us this freedom that we have to just do whatever we want, they sacrificed for us. I implore you, I beg you, I encourage you to please read literature of old because we're speaking in Babel. We don't know our rights. We don't know these government's limitations. We don't know our remedies. And it's because we're real busy being entertained by the next movie or series on Netflix or, you know, whatever. And I'm guilty of it, too. I'm totally guilty of it, too. But I'm, I'm making myself do this. And I'm, I've am i set this time aside for me and for you guys. So if you can just hang out with me. I know maybe it's not the most exciting thing and you could do other things with your time, but I thank you guys for coming and hanging out with me. Last Wednesday, there was nobody in the chat. Everybody was in another room and, and I get it. You know, you can watch this on a replay. It's not going to be much different, you know? So I don't, I don't, I'm not going to be the most popular uh, YouTuber here, but I'm going to keep asking you guys to, to mindfully, study old literature and take away time entertaining yourself to fill your mind with truths, whether it be the Bible, the constitution, the county stuff, whatever we need, whatever is your passion, dig in deeper, just dig in deeper. There's so much information out there. And I see YouTube as a cesspool of knowledge hoarders of, um, obese gluttons of knowledge and con artists too. Don't forget the con artists on YouTube, but I also see it as a great tool before 2020 YouTube was just where we all went to look up videos because there were such cool, really cool and great people that wanted to just share information with you for free. Remember that? And you didn't have to pay to find out how to change your washing machine belt. Do you remember those times when people just like wanted to share information with you because their heart, not because they were looking to make a living off of YouTube? Polly, good to see you, brother. A good, well, I want to go find out what you've been learning. Do you have a channel? I mean, I know you have a channel because I, well, I don't know that you have a channel, but you have to have a channel to be on, right? Um, do you teach stuff? Like I like to go and sit and learn too. I watch people that are giving time free and they're giving me the truth free. That's awesome. Yeah, it is the biggest con artist, right? Do you have a channel, Lenny? You're a new show. Ah, Phil, good to see you. You guys, Phil and Nora bought the kit. And let me show you. I'd be remiss if I didn't show you real quick. I know I went a little long today and I do apologize. But um, if you are interested in this study, please go to standuphumble.news. Go to the Constitution tab all the way on the right. And you can buy your kit for um, to follow along with us. It is the best $67 I've spent in years. I can't believe how much stuff I got. This is my photo from my table. Well, the other one was. <laughs> this photo is from what I got when it came in and I just laid it all out. I haven't even checked the DVD out yet, but I'm gonna. Devil Dog says it's real boring. Don't put it on. No one will hang out with me if I throw that movie on. So, <laughs> But I'm gonna put it on sometime and check it out. You can buy your kit if you tick, click on that picture or this picture, the first two. If you can't afford the kit, that's why I'm uploading the study for the day. And I will also have the rest of these on here. Right now, I've only got the first five on here. And I'm working on that. I'll get the rest on here soon for you guys, okay? All right. And uh, it's going to be a good week. I'm excited. It seems like a lot of good things are happening. You do other pods? You do on other pods? Okay. 
Yeah, I was just looking at my uh, Podbean today, you guys. I do have a Podbean channel. Um, and it, it looks like, uh-oh, it's it's expired. It is standuphumble.com. So pretty soon I will get that going. And then if you guys don't want to, like, put on YouTube and just listen and no audio, um, that's what I'll do. Well worth it, right? Yeah, it's well worth it. Nothing makes you feel better I don't know. For me, I'm I'm a news junkie too. I don't just want that news, but I want that solution. I want to apply my hands and feet and my knowledge and my talent that God gave me to make a difference. We are all little fish in big pond. We can all make a huge difference. You don't have to be a super big personality to make waves these days because a lot of people are just kind of sleepwalking through life. You don't really have to do much to get noticed as a mover and a shaker in today's times, right? Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, I just don't feel good. What happened? Are you in California? Newsom was laid out at the wall at Giddy nine weeks ago. Man, all I do know is that is not Newsom, and it hasn't been Newsom for a long time. Neither is Fetterman, neither is Biden, neither is Kamala Harris, neither is Nancy Pelosi. Because you know what? I've paid attention to these people for years and I'm not so stupid that they just have to put a somewhat lookalike. Let me show you some pictures. Let me show you some pictures. I'm going to get off. I'll probably cut this out for the, for the study. But um, since you're all still here talking with me, let me show you some things I've discovered. There's a couple memes going around about, there's a meme going on around about Fetterman that shows his death. I mean, you know, if you go look on, uh, check this out. If you go look on uh, Bill and Melinda Gates on, uh, what's it called? What's that? Ancestry? They've been dead since 2013. So who the hell are the people that are going around touting that they're Bill and Melinda Gates? Or is Ancestry lying? Do you know what a crisis actor is? Do you know why the um, Constitution book, the Catechism book, First question says, what country do you live in? Some people in America today live in the United, the, the cor, what is it, how is it called? Corporation of the U.S., U.S. Corporation of America. And some of us live in the United States of America. Did you know that? It's true. It's true. And the people that don't know that they are, um, that there is a real America with a real constitution here. They're stuck in the fake America by the fake corporation that owns the media. And that's how they're able to do it. And um, Hollywood. They're all fakers. Okay. They're fakers. These people are fake. The people that are sitting in the... Board of Supervisors and the City Council meetings in Humboldt County, they have no proper oath or bond. Why do you think I constantly refer to them as crisis actors, frauds, criminals? Because they are. Because they are. They are not our public servants, you guys. They're not. They're fakers. They're fakers. Uh, I can't blow this up. Okay. Let me show you Fetterman in all his glory. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't mean it that way. Let me show you Fetterman. Let me show you four Fettermans. You tell me. Are, do you do you not think that this media would do something like that? There are Dopplingers. We're not talking about clones. Oh, they didn't. They cloned Fetterman. He has a, there's Dopplingers. There's lookalikes. There's people that. That is the name of the game here, you guys. We are being fooled by media. Ancestry is current, is correct, D. I was in that country and saw them hanged. Shut up. You are, sh shut up. Don't you blow my mind. Don't you come in here throwing tall tales like that. What do you mean you've seen them hanged? I want a picture. Do you got a link for that? <laughs> wow. Mask clones and CGI. Yeah, mask clones. I've seen the mask. I've seen how they work. I mean, I've seen chicks take off full-on body suits. They don't even have boobies under there. They were guys. They looked like chicks, right? Google central casting. 
What? That's crazy. All right, check this out. This is Fetterman for you. Oh, no, wrong one. This is Fetterman, huh? This is Fetterman? This guy in the bottom left is who they're touting out to you and telling you, yeah, this is Fetterman. His ears are different. His nose is different. His eyes are different. We're dum-dums. You know, the whole, um, what's that called when they put in a, uh, an actor when it's a dangerous scene? The guy out of the shadows was one of those. What are they called when they're, 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 they're the replacement actor, right? When they do the danger stuff. That is where we first started getting fooled. And they realized how easy it was to fool us. It's like, oh, yeah, we'll put in the double, the stunt double. It's a stunt double, right? We'll put in the stunt double. Okay, so the people that are in Humboldt County that I'm saying are not real people. They are real people, but they're they're crisis actors. They don't have a proper oath or bond. Their asses should not be sitting up in there telling us or ruling over us. Nothing. Our asses should be there with pitchforks and shovels and telling them to GTFO now. So I can't really talk about this stuff anymore much. You can tell I get really pissed off and I get really fleshed out and I don't hold my composure because I'm dealing with fraudulent criminals that are murdering our children and they're murdering people in my community. Okay. They are murderers. They are murderers. They're liars. There's no other way to put it. I'm not going to sugarcoat this crap. These people are murderers. Oh, I'm going to let leave it off on this video I took yesterday. I uploaded it briefly. I, I had it on stand up for a minute and then I took it down because it just. I know, babe, I know you just can't, right? You just can't. I can't do it all every day. I, my mental health was waning. I was getting myself sick thinking about these people doing what they're doing. We need more, more engaged in the county. We need more people. We really do. We really do. I love those wind chimes. Can you hear my wind chimes? So the reason why I'm streaming this um, study, this is the reason exactly why I'm streaming the study. And I'm going to get off here because I don't want to get off into some other stuff. I'm already over and I'm already ranting, but, and I'm already 50 minutes. <laughs> I'll cut this. When I put these upload on the website, they're going to be cut. None of this will be on here. Rumble will have all of the rambling so you can stay on Rumble. I'm going to be uploading these on BitChute without the blah, blah, blahs, okay? Here's what I'm ending on. And I'm begging anybody in Humble County who could blow a whistle to blow a whistle. If you are in this medical community, if you work for the public department of education or health or education, if you work for the sheriff, I don't care who you work for. If you are in Humble County and you know that stuff is wrong, could you please, uh, you know, give a call to uh, Gravitas or, um, you know, ONE news or who should they contact? You know, who's, Who's the person to contact if you're a whistleblower? I need a whistleblower in Humboldt County. I need somebody to, to help our kids. Our kids are dying, and this is the crap they're doing. So this is your message, United Indian Health Services? This is your message? Do this for your community? You know, you need to learn your history. This is a disgrace. Look around the world, fools. That wasn't the right one I wanted, but that's okay. Um, it's okay. It doesn't matter. That's that's the sign right when you come into Eureka. I have had two billboard signs removed t taking Peggy Hall's advice. Here's something keyboard warriors can do. You can go to the Department of 
public transportation and complain about any billboards like that. I did it. I had two removed here in Humble County, and now they're back. And you know what they did? Because by law, they're only allowed to have three words if it's a public service announcement, okay? And then, of course, what they did is they used the natives and their land, and they're able to put those messages up. But on public property, you're not supposed to have any community messages, any public service announcements that are more than three words, so you can have those billboards removed, and I definitely am going to have that billboard removed. Thank you, Peggy Hall, for teaching us how to do that. I've, I've done some things. I don't tout about all the stuff I do all the time. I don't really like hearing people talk about everything they've done. I would like another lips to praise me, thank you very much, and not my own. I'm not into that, you know. Hi, Lauren Price. Good to see you. No, they don't like it, do they? They have kept us separate the first year or two, getting my channels taken down, getting them knocked down. Everybody I was following, getting their channel. They really did us dirty, didn't they? they I mean, we could have been assembled a lot faster had the censoring not come about us, which is why our First Amendment is so important. But when you're building on other people's lands like YouTube, you don't get to complain. This is their platform. It's not mine. I'm using their platform, so I have to put up with their nonsense. Even though I'm an American and this is America and they shouldn't be censoring us, they do that, don't they? They do do that. A gas stove ban is coming. Oh, they're going to try to tell you to freeze your ass off legally. America, when you're ready to stand up anytime, we're ready for you. The state assemblies are together. Grand juries are forming. Uh, unlawful sheriffs aren't going to be around forever. You may look like you got it made right now, but I don't know how you sleep at night, quite frankly. I don't know how any of you people that are still going along to get along with COVID are even allowed to walk down the street. I better never run into you, Johnny Kell, nurse of Humboldt County. I better never, ever run into you in town because I'll probably end up in jail. is just I, I can't even I just better get off all right I'm gonna edit out all my ramblings and rants and uh, I don't know when I'll see you guys again but I sure love y'all for being here I really appreciate you all for being here and um, if you have any uh, educational materials that you think I would like, send it to me. D-Dog always sends me stuff. I'm always watching stuff. I, if I do come back later, there's a lady I would love to show you who schooled a judge. That's what I would like to start sharing more, more with you guys is, is um, people who are in the courtroom owning it. This is our country. They work for us. They're not working for us right now because we're not giving them the directions that they need to work for us. I might come back later and show off some of the Arcata City Council because they did it right. They were showing off good. Love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out and listening to my ramblings. I appreciate you all so much. I hope you're blessed today. And bless God. America, bless God. <laughs>